Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India session we will talk about the global leadership and you know that our prime minister is talking about the uh, the global concept right global means that is the be global uh, and uh, remain a local right so therefore in that case how we can develop that particular global leadership that we will be talking in, in this session and uh, here we will talk about uh, uh, the global leadership global versus domestic leadership, uh, four dimensions of complexity in the global context, global leadership essentials, uh, globe study, uh, research paper, uh, case study, book recommendation and the references are there. So, as usual uh, we will be having these uh, research paper and case study and book recommendations and further references for you. Now, whenever we are talking about the global leadership, there are four uh, ingredients in the true leadership that is a brain, soul, heart and good nerves are there. So, th therefore, uh, uh, according to the founder of the World Economic Forum, right. So, in the whenever we are talking about the true leadership, it is the brains, right. So, brains means that is uh, in other sense, I would like to talk about the IQ, intelligent quotient is there, the soul is there, that is the spirituality is there, and a heart and good nerves are there, that is the emotional is there. So, therefore, in that case that IQ, EQ and SQ are in, in, in this uh, context, uh, we talk about the brains, soul, heart and good nerves are there. So, whenever we are having that much of uh, intelligence, intelligent quotient, then definitely we will be having that particular sort of this uh, uh, the decision making process. But decision making process is not only basis of the intelligence, this decision making process is based on the heart and good nerves also. right? So, therefore, we, we are emotionally connect and ultimately it is the soul that is a spiritual quotient is there. Now, when global leadership, where did it come from? The 1970s I saw an increase in the number of studies done on the expatriate managers, a person working abroad hmm? and therefore, in that case and the challenges associated with the managing subordinates from national cultures other than their own. So, when your team is created and uh, your team is uh, having this uh, number of uh, mm, the uh, uh, employees uh, who are coming from the different countries. So, naturally their culture is different and that uh, those subordinates from the national cultures. Uh, so, therefore, that uh, managing subordinates is becoming this so different that is the studies of the expatriates in the 1980s and 90s uh, raised awareness and insight regarding the role that culture plays as a significant variable. Hmm? So, naturally these employees are coming from the different uh, um, culture. So, they, they are coming in different countries, so different culture. So, therefore, in that case the boss or leader should be aware about this thing that is his subordinates, his team members, those who have uh, having. So, that insight uh, was uh, uh, regarding the role that culture plays as a significant variable in cross cultural managerial leadership effectiveness. So, because the leader is coming from the different uh, cross culture leadership uh, uh, effectiveness. So, therefore, if you want to be the effective in the cross culture, you should be well aware about the different culture, their practices. Then much of this research was driven by the advent of the globalization. So, slowly and slowly what happened that is these uh, international employees, they have increased since 1970s and therefore, the uh, changes and challenges were seen by the leader. To overcome these uh, challenges and changes, uh, mm, then uh, that, new, uh, that uh, uh, leader has to be trained accordingly. Because earlier this, there was no neither this change nor this challenge, but to meet this uh, challenge, the leader's effectiveness, naturally, that managerial leadership effectiveness, organizational effectiveness, that will depend on the performance of the all the employees, those who are working and coming from the different countries. 
So, what is a global leadership is there? A global leader is an individual who inspires a group of people to willingly pursue a positive vision in an effectively organized fashion. Hmm? So, it is an, uh, uh, actually an individual uh, who is uh, uh, inspiring a group of people you know? and that is also willingly. right? So, towards what? Towards a positive vision because we also seen the dark side of the leadership. So, therefore, when we are talking about the global leadership, so that global leadership is not in the context of uh, any dark side rather than it is towards the positive vision and uh, while fostering the individual and collective growth in a context characterized by the significant level of complexity, flow and presence is there. And therefore, in that case uh, it is becoming very, very important that is we are having the significant level of the uh, uh, complexity is there huh? and uh, then uh, uh, that uh, how this uh, complexity in this context the leader is supposed to perform in a, uh, a, 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 in a uh, uh, purposeful direction. The leadership of individuals who influence and bring about significant positive changes in forms organizations and communities by facilitating the appropriate level of trust, organizational structure and processes. Right? So, there this is a dimension. So, what is the goal? Goal is about the significant positive changes hmm? and the whatever the, 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 the dimensions which are affecting trust, organizational structure and processes. So, this is involving the multiple stakeholders, resources, cultures under the various conditions of temporal, then the geographical and the, cult and the cultural complexity is there. The global leadership uh, versus domestic leadership, what differences it makes? Concerning international capability, global leadership has been defined as more complex than domestic uh, by the uh, Me uh, Meznevsky and uh, Di Stefano in 2000. So, therefore, international capability will be definitely different because when people are coming from the different uh, uh, countries right then th that international to lead the international uh, people that will require a different quality is there global leaders need to be explored with a, a repertoire of alternate characteristics that differentiate themselves from the domestic leaders so naturally there will be the difference in the international leaders and the domestic leaders global leaders require not just emotional intelligence to work in different cultures and environment, but also cultural intelligence. Now, here is this is the term that is about the cultural intelligence. So, therefore, in that case uh, it is with the emotional intelligence there will be the cultural differences. In. So, and that is the uh, capability for successful adaptation to new cultural settings. So, therefore, in that case there will be the successful adaptation will be to uh, new cultural settings and that particular capability is required by the manager and to adopt this a beautiful terminology has been given that is a cultural intelligence because whenever you are interacting with people maybe within India because in, in what is in Indian culture unity in diversity. So, we are interacting with the different uh, level of these uh, um, uh, employees at, in a different culture and different states, different religion. right? So, therefore, who will be able to uh, work in diversity and that is who is having the, the strong cultural intelligence. Regarding multicultural research has shown that domestic leadership is quite different than global leadership and this is also to be noticed that is the global leadership is totally different than the um, than the globe uh, it is a domestic leadership is there. Because what works in one country does not always work in the another country naturally right. So, uh, there will be the, uh, uh, this particular difference. Four dimensions of complexity in the global context multiplicity uh, this reflects the geometric increase in the number and type of issues that global leaders must deal. So, therefore, a, a large number of increases there number issues that, that, that is uh, the global leaders uh, have to face uh, as compared to the domestic leaders. It reflects the necessity of global leaders having to deal with more and different competitors. So, therefore, in that case uh, uh, that, that is the it is it is becoming the uh, totally different uh, uh, the uh, context in which that they have to get the work done. Right? And therefore, in are, are influence the their team members. 
So, more and different competitors are there. Now, here also we have to see because it is in now the global village or the global competition. So, your competitors will be also different. Customers, governments and stakeholders that will be also different and non-governmental organizations will be there. So, uh, here we have to see that is the, the, the all the stakeholders NGOs are there, government is there, customers are there, uh, different competitors are there. All, 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 all stakeholders and they are creating the different culture and on basis of that this will be decided. So, uh, what is the interdependency is there? Interdependencies generate complexity that global leaders must be able to attend to. When you are having these uh, global level of these uh, uh, your uh, uh, organizational uh, functioning, then definitely the interdependency as it is increasing, but it is creating more complexities also. And, and the leader has to attend it. The increase of interdependencies in economies, ventures, uh, virtual teamwork, etc., all create a higher bar for leaders in terms of performance. So, therefore, in that case, uh, uh, these uh, the uh, the parameters, right, in in the terms of these uh, economies, ventures, and virtual teamwork is there. So, therefore, different uh, uh, these uh, bars will be there here, and the leader has to cross the different barriers, and, and in terms of performance and the skill set acquisition is there. And naturally, uh, that is not only the managerial performance, but also the operational performance that is a skill sets which is required. Third one is the ambiguity. So, it is a lack of information clarity, unclear cause and effective relation, relationships is there and equivocality regarding the information. So, multiple interpretation of the same facts that is called the equivocality. So, that equivocality is increased in global work settings, uh, cross cultural differences uh, in norms in the interpretation of both qualitative and quantitative information and it is add to the challenge of manage, managing across the borders is there. Right? So, the, here you will find it is the all these challenges and changes right? that is to be seen. And if multiplicity, interdependence and ambiguity were not enough, the whole system is always in motion, always changing. Right. So, therefore, in that case uh, and this is a continuous process, it is not like that is it is a one time changes, it, it will be the continuous process. So, therefore, it is always in motion and always keep on changing, it seems to be changing at a faster rate all the time, this is also very very important the rate of change. Right. It is so fast that by the time you make a one change and can adopt that particular change, the another change enters. So, therefore, this is becoming a totally uh, very short cycled uh, exercise, but essential exercise is there. So, what are these uh, global leadership essentials? Uh, solid uh, waste man, uh, solid management and the leadership skills is there. So, therefore, that is to be seen the global mindset as I was mentioning that is the India is working on this global mindset, leadership, agility, extra efforts to bridge the, uh, to distance and the intercultural competence is there. And therefore, in that case you will find that is the these uh, leadership essentials in the, at the global level is required that is uh, your uh, practices should be having this solid management and leadership skills. What are the solid management is there? So, therefore, act on the defined goals. So, you have to define the goal and vision and now vision is global vision, execution and control. Now, the globally you have to execute and globally you have to control then there will be the resource planning and in the resource planning whatever the main machine material money method and minutes you are having did all to be managed globally the problem solving approach and the procedures are there. So, these are to be followed. Similarly, in the leadership shape the future hmm, and the transformation is there because the you, you are going from the one culture to another culture. So, transformation is there ambiguity will be always there uh, remaining there opportunities are to be created and ideas and risk that has to be monitor. So, therefore, in that case whenever you are having this uh, uh, the control over these uh, managerial issues and leadership issues and then definitely you will be able to communicate and motivate to your uh, the team members. Ability to think and act both global and local, a manager with a global mindset understands the need for the global uh, uh, integration and the local responsiveness and works to the optimize this duality. Right? So, therefore, that global, global integration and the local responsiveness that is very much necessary. Global mindset involves an appreciation for diversity as well as homogeneity 
end and openness to learn from everywhere. So, therefore, in that case, uh, this is becoming the you know, global mindset, right? So, homogeneity and uh, openness to learn from the everywhere uh, because the they are working from the uh, different uh, corners of the world. So, therefore, a competence that can be developed the glo global mindset involves cognitive skills to handle complexity and um, cosmopolitan outlook. Second is open, empathetic and curious about the diverse of people and the situations are there. And therefore, in that case, one side the cognitive ability and the other side that is the practically they are able to manage the, uh, the uh, that are working with the people from, uh, with the different diverse uh, uh, situations and diverse culture. Knowledge about the world affairs that is what is going on globally ability to appreciate different points of view because everybody is coming from the different culture. So, he is having the different perception and therefore, different point of view. Ability to bridge and merge ideas that is merge global and the local into the global is there. The third very important aspect is that is the leadership agility is there. So, leadership agility adjusting behavior without losing yourself and leadership agility is supported by. Now, now you see that is the always uh, uh, the leader they are required to be the flexible. Right, but flexible in the sense that is without losing themselves. It should not be like this. That is the um, they 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 are lost in the process of that global leadership. They should not be lost. So tolerance of ambiguity is required, resilience is required, humility is required, and the perspective taking is required. Being effective in a uh, myriad of foreign situations uh, requires more than the mere knowledge, and it requires the capacity. To act on what you know, mold and shape your behavior so that you can be simultaneously be effective and appropriate in a setting without losing who you are in the process is there. And therefore, in that case your behavior, so that in that particular capacity, right? So, it is the setting is required. So, where you can shape your behavior. This is very very important dear friends. So, first we have understood what is why their um, how their global leadership is different from the domestic leadership is there. And once you know that is the, these these traits are required right and these are the factors and dimensions which is affecting then you have to develop those uh, particular traits and that is called the shaping your behavior. So, when you are shaping your behavior then in a sense, so then you, you are into the um, winning position and controlling the situation is there. What does leaders role require in terms of the bridging the distance between the local and leader is there. Geographical, emotional, cultural and social is there. Successful leaders are those who are able to shift their communication style, leadership methods and strategy. These are very very important point that is the uh, because this changes, no, that is not that easy. That is why I am saying it is very important. That even by knowing that is, I have to change my communication style, the people are failing to develop themselves to change the communication style. Leadership methods. So, once they are having the one uh, sort of the leadership method, they will continue with the leadership method only. And the strategy to fit various contexts and bridge geographical as well as the social and emotional distance is there. And therefore, in that case, uh, the social and emotional distance is also equally important whenever you are making this type of this uh, uh, leadership practices are there. They can move skillfully back and forth between the different uh, differing the business environments, even when these call for the every different approaches are there. And therefore, here it, it, it is becoming uh, important that is the whatever the business environment is changing and accordingly they will making the different approaches. So, that agility is required in the leadership. So, as soon as the these changes are demanded and the leader is able to cope up with this particular changes are there. The inter, in, intercultural competence, this is a set of cognitive, affective and behavioral skills and characteristics uh, that support effective and appropriate interaction, right. So, as I mentioned that IQ, attitude, right and that attitude is, is the cognitive is there, the affect is there, there is a feeling is there and behavior. So, therefore, that affect emotions, that is the feeling and that is the behavior. So, therefore, in that case that whenever we are talking about 
and this particular intercultural aspects right so they they will be all be related with the whatever these uh, uh, they are going to make the effects then uh, it will be there uh, how they are making the intercultural competence and uh, uh, there these uh, affective that is the, their uh, the feelings uh, and their emotions their moods and their behavior attitude and their behavior so that that that, that will be the those will be the changes and characteristics that support effective and appropriate inter interaction in a variety of cultural context. So, this will develop the ability to communicate effectively and appropriately in intercultural situations based on the one's intercultural knowledge, skills and attitude is there. A mindset cognitive dimension is required developing the cultural self awareness, uh, a skill set behavioral dimension and the a heart set affective dimension is there. So, therefore, this cultural self awareness and managing this social interaction and that is this uh, skill set, hmm, mindset, skill set and the heart set. So, these are the three very very important uh, competency measures are there. So, therefore, once uh, you, uh, you have made your uh, mindset to be global. So, the, those practices you will try. So, therefore, in that case you will develop those skills and when you are adopt, you are able to adopt and manage those skills, you will go for the administration that is a hard set affective dimension tolerance and amb ambiguity right. So, that, that will be measured uh, and the developed by the uh, leader is there. Whenever we are talking developing intercultural competence, four level of cultural awareness, unconscious competence. So, that is about the no, uh, that is uh, uh, blindness is there. So, we are not aware actually what are the really the changes are required, what changes and how they are different from others. Conscious in incompetence that is the once we know that no this type of behavior is required, this is a culture of that particular country and then sensitivity consciously we will making the unaware. Then on the conscious competence and the competence, so therefore, that uh, 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 ability consciously making yourself aware to do that particular job and uh, finally, the proficiency unconsciously aware is there and therefore, in that case uh, that blindness, sensitivity, competence and proficiency will be developed. The intercultural development continuum describes a set of knowledge, attitude and skill sets are the orientations towards the cultural differences and commonality that are uh, uh, arrayed along a continuum for the more um, monocultural mindsets are there. So, therefore, in that case whatever the monocultural mindsets of de their denial and polarization is there and th that will be the making the uh, transitional orientation of minimization right. So, you can make, make the global mindset of the acceptance and adaptation is there. The capability of the deeply shifting cultural perspective, now the, uh, that is the deeply shifting right. So, once you know the culture and then you are getting the deeply involved into that particular culture and bridging the behavior across cultural differences. So, therefore, suppose there is a culture A and there is a culture B, now, now, now you have to bridge. So, therefore, you, you are here, so you know that is how you can bridge the A and B and this will be the common parameters. So, it is mostly achieved when one maintains an adaptation perspective, this is the adaptation perspective. Uh, this continuum is adopted from the developmental model of the intercultural sensitivity originally proposed by the Milton Bennett. So, therefore, this, this is the one and this is the another, these are the two right. So, development model of the intercultural sensitivity of these two. So, in spite of the fight, now what you are doing? You are getting the involved. So, therefore, in that case it, it, it is the uh, that whenever we are talking about that deeply shifting cultural perspectives, we are able to develop uh, the by the Milton Bennett that particular model. Now, uh, whenever uh, this uh, um, uh, model of the uh, intercultural competency is uh, talked. So, the, this Hammers adopted model uh, that we will see how, how it works and therefore, you can learn that is the how to bridge the distance between the global leadership and the domestic leadership is there. So, normally what happens monocultural mindset is there right. So, they, they will be the uh, denial will be there while in the intercultural mindset it will be the adaptation will be there. In the monoculture polarization the justice differentiate will be there, here the acceptance uh, will be there 
and therefore the de-emphasizes differences that is the minimization will be there and from when monocultural minimization is there it will go to the uh, maximization of the intercultural mindset is there. So, right from the denial hmm, that conversion that that is a leadership difference. So, it is not the journey by step by step very easily rather than it requires a lot of leadership qualities are there. If those leadership qualities are there then definitely you will be able to go for that. When we talk about the Bennett, uh, Bennett framework of the intercultural competence, right? So the, it, it, it is the uh, ethnocentric stages, and then the uh, um, ethno-relative stages are there. So uh, now is the potential response to the cultural difference, right? So as one's experience of cultural difference becomes more complex and sophisticated, one's competence in intercultural relations increase. That is the uh, if uh, he is the competence enough. So, it will uh, uh, in, uh, making the, uh, the effect in the ethnocentric stages of the denial, defense and minimization. Similarly, uh, the acceptance and adaptation and integration uh, in the, that, the, that will be also be the part of that is the how fast the person is able to experience the differences. And when there are the such differences are fast, then there will be definitely uh, there will be the adaptation of the culture. So, GLOBE is an acronym for a research program called the Global Leadership and the Organizational Behavior Effectiveness right? and uh, it is the most comp comprehensive study of leadership and cultural uh, um, ever attempted involving the data collected from over 17,000 uh, uh, managers uh, representing 950 companies in 62 countries. So, uh, the future orientation due to which individuals in organizations are society stages in future oriented behaviors like in planning and less investing in the future in case of India. So, the degree to which individuals express pride, loyalty and cohesiveness in their organizations, families, other smaller groups are concerned, so, uh, then that we will say that is a collectivism is there. Now, this is a very good example of representative societal differences on the two globe dimensions. One is the societal hires and collective trend to the society is higher on the individual type. So, individual versus collectivism is there. So, have a slower pace of life collectivism have lower heart attack rates right uh, assign less weight because the, there is a less stress assign less weight to love in marriage in marriage right and the decisions are taken have fewer interactions but interactions tend to be longer and more intimate is there hmm? collectivism is there while in the case of the individualism have a faster pace of life have a faster heart attack rates assign greater weight to love in marriage decisions have more special interactions, but interactions tend to be shorter and less intimate is there. And therefore, in that case, the, the, the societal higher on individualism, it will not work as compared to the societies higher on the future orientation. So, what, what, why this is required? To achieve the economic success, have flexible and adaptive organization and managers flexibility will increase, adaptability will increase, emphasize visionary leadership that is the capable of seeing patterns in the face of chaos and uncertainty. So, that visionary leadership can be seen. Uh, as far as the future orientation lower are concerned, have lower rates of economic success, have inflexible and male adaptive organizations and managers emphasize leadership that focuses on the repetition of the reproducible and the routine sequences are there and therefore, in that case uh, this will be the future orientation. So, culturally endorsed the implicit theories of leadership are there, the heart of the conceptual model in the globe research is what is called implicit leadership theory and this theory holds that individuals have implicit beliefs and assumptions uh, about the attributes and behaviors that distinguish leaders from followers, effective leaders from ineffective leaders and the moral from immoral leaders are there. The GLOBE model further uh, uh, posits uh, that relatively distinctive implicit theories of leadership characterize different societal cultures from the each other as well as the organizational cultures within those societal cultures. So, GLOBE calls uh, these culturally endorsed implicit theories of leadership is there. So, uh, here you will we will we will understand that is whenever we are talking about this GLOBE model right and then it, it is the uh, characterize the different societal culture. So, that we understand that is what differences are there and therefore, uh, uh, not only that the implicit theories of the leadership characterize the societal culture, but it is also as well as the organizational culture because that we have uh, discussed earlier that is every organization is having the different culture. So, therefore, that societal cultural differences 
uh, that national culture differences and organizational culture differences. So, Global calls these uh, culturally endorsed implicit theories of uh, leadership is there. There are the six dimensions uh, apply across all global cultures for this uh, the, uh, the after detailed analysis of finding uh, the globe finally research has identified six dimensions. So, charismatic value based leadership is there that ability because you see from where we have started we have started from the local to global. So, the distance so that requires a charismatic leadership and value based leadership is required people should uh, able to uh, inspire others motivated us and expect the high performance from others on the basis of firmly held code. Now, this is also very important dear friends that is the what we is required the high performance from others is uh, that is to be required. Team oriented leadership is there that is effective the team building and implementation of a common purpose or the goal among the team members is required and the participative leadership is required the managers involve others in making and implementing the decisions are required. The human oriented leadership reflects supportive and considerate, uh, considerate leadership as well as the compassion and generosity. Hmm? So, autonomous leadership refers to independent and individualistic leadership. The self protective leadership focuses on the ensuring the safety and security of the individual or group members. Uh, then uh, it, uh, it uh, identified 22 specific attributes are there. So, that what we have seen is that is the uh, these all six dimensions that is a self protective leadership, human oriented leadership, autonomous leadership right and the charismatic team leadership, participative leadership. So, these three we have already discussed uh, into our earlier studies, but these three leadership which they have given on the basis of their research that is a self protective leadership. So, here that safety and security of the individual or group member that is becoming very very important. Because when you are making the changes you should be sustainable otherwise they will find it difficult. 22 specific attributes trustworthy, just, honest, foresighted, intelligent, plans ahead, encouraging, informed, excellence oriented, communicative, team leader, positive, dynamic, decisive, motive arouser, effective bargainer, confidence builder, win-win problem solver, motivational, administratively skilled, dependable and the coordinator is there right. So, therefore, in that case all, all these traits actually that we have talked about the leadership um, the across right and, uh, and these all are the um, we have talked about the bargainer negotiation also we have talked about the number 16 that is the effective bargainer that is a negotiation how to do the negotiation is there inspiring and then the confidence builder is required leader. So, all, all, all these uh, universal leadership attributes that have been summarized here by the globe is there. Whatever the culturally contingent this, this list is uh, very very important because uh, ultimately it is the adaptability of culture. So, ambitious, conscious, compassionate right if you are not compassionate then difficult to adopt no, then the domineering and the independent individualistic and logical orderly sincere worldly formal and sensitive is there. So, therefore, these attributes that will be leading according to the globe to towards the culturally contingent is there. Eight characteristics universally used as impediment to the leader effectiveness is that is the loner, um, asocial, uh, non cooperative, irritable, non explicit, egocentric, ruthless, and the dictatorial. So, therefore, this will not work, dear friends, right? Earlier might have worked in some context, but not now. And this is as usually is the research paper developing a global mindset, learning of the global leaders. So, it is, uh, uh, I am sure you will find it very uh, interesting. And therefore, uh, this qualitative research study was to explore the requirements of leading in a global environment as perceived by the leaders participating in this study. These leaders learn and develop their global mindset is there. This is the approach and findings are there. These are the implication of the study that we will be talk about how to develop the global leadership is there. As usual, this is the case study how Google and I, uh, IBM develop the global leaders and therefore, in that case we can uh, dirty field training champions by the Google and the process of the Google's approach is the highly flexible, very focused and the fewer company resources are there. The cons of these particular because you see every style of leadership, every, every practices that will have the pros and cons both. So, cons of the Google approach will be an uh, ulterior motive, the danger of inconsistency right, while the IBM a thorough in house training program. So, pros about the uh, IBM's approach is the depth, the ethics, 
right. The cons about the IBM approach is the resource intensive not as, as practical and not as, as flexible is there. And uh, finally, this is the book that is a global leadership, the next generation that has been suggested for you uh, by the Marshall Goldsmith for your further readings. I am sure by this reading you will be able to learn about uh, uh, this how the global leadership uh, is has been developed. The case studies has been given to your Accenture study of the emerging business leaders that has been shared and these are the references uh, which you can use for your further references and uh, for your uh, detailed studies you can uh, take uh, these references uh, so that you can be a global leader and going from the uh, uh, local to global for the business by remaining global. Thank you.